two are really quick. Either you get it or you don't. It's either quick or you'll never get it done. Um, so for what, what's the coordinates for A here? Yeah, down back four, <coughs> down five. So negative four, negative five. I love it. What about B? Yeah, back three, up two. I mean, do you see, don't make too much out of what these are supposed to do, right, and how they work. Uh, C, yeah, move over four, and then up and down, not at all. D? Good, back one, up three. So back one, up three. E, is there any? Yes. Two over, three down. I like it. Cool. Is that by itself? Okay. Identifying the coordinates, and this is what we call these. These are coordinates. Identify the coordinates of a point. This is the other way around. This is plotting the points. Where would 0, 2, how do I get there? Good. So you don't go left and right at all. You only go up 2. So that's A. So when you plot points, you put little labels next to them. Makes it a lot easier on the guy grading stuff, which is me. Uh, what about this guy? Back three. Up five. I love it. Bam. So that's holy crap. That's B. <laughs> what about this one? Beautiful, beautiful. And then this one, D. You back four and then stay there. Mike, Mike, these won't line up. They don't want to get there. Bam. D. And where's E? There's E. I like it. What quadrant is, is this? Does somebody do, see how these planes make one, two, three, four? I basically just gave it on. Yeah, this one right here is quadrant one. This is two. We go out, we go counterclockwise just because. It really was that you had a 50-50 chance of sh choosing clockwise and they chose the other way. It's too bad for us. So they ask you about quadrants in the book. That's what they mean. So if I said, are there any points that are in quadrant one from what we graphed? Are there any in quadrant one? No. This one is actually on the y-axis. And which points are in quadrant two? Just B. In quadrant three, C. In quadrant four, E. I love it. So uh, uh, A is not in a quadrant that's, at all. Then, that's right. right. It's sitting on the fence. Okay. It's like, whose yard is that kid in? Well, he's on the fence. Huh? He's, in, <laughs> he's in both yards and either yards. Right. So we just don't count him as being in either any quadrant. Because he didn't choose. So right? that's why it's zero. It's not a quadrant. It's on, you would say, on the y-axis. It. It's not in the quadrant. It's on the y-axis. The other guy, D, is on the x-axis. Yes? So if it were a test and it asked us what yes. quadrant is point A in, you would say? On the y-axis. Or if you said not in a quadrant, I would accept that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, could you spell equation for me? Say, spell what now? Equation. Oh, quadrant. Oh, yeah, so this is a quadrant. I like it. Quad, rant. So you ride the quad, you're writing about something. Or not quadrant. Now, real quick, just a look ahead. Remember how we were making points for x plus y equals three? If we had a list of them, we could plot them and then connect them, and that's how you make a graph of a function. So, for this one, you would just start. You would put a two in and solve for y and put it there. That's how you can create a list of points. So when you graph those points, they have a pattern to them that is distinguished that is, that is set up by that equation. So every graph you make shows the relationship that the equation sets up. That's why graphing them is so important. So that's what we'll get into next time. I'll bring the quizzes graded and the practice tests on Tuesday. Monday is a day off. Don't come. You'll be very lonely wandering around. You want us to turn the worksheet?